Hey, 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 and welcome to Sellaholics Anonymous. If you are a subscriber, welcome back and thank you for the support. If you are a new viewer, this is the first time you viewed any of my videos. I hope that you take a look around, hope you like what you see, and choose to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. Today's video is going to be on how to create an outline stack text design. This video is inspired by a post that I saw in one of the Facebook groups that I'm in, and she wanted to know how to create this design so that she could uh, sublimate it for a local high school team. I'm going to show you how to do it uh, with this particular design, which is inspired by the Bahamas, um, and just letting them know that our thoughts and prayers are with them as they recover from Hurricane Dorian. I'm actually going to make quite a few uh, designs with the Bahamian theme on it, just like Bahamas and things like that, so that I can send them over when we send our supplies um, over to the Bahamas. I just want them to have some designs that, you know, just remind them of how beautiful their island was and how beautiful it will be again. All right, so we're going to jump into this. If you have never used Silhouette Studio before, you're going to click on the A on this side to start your text. You're going to click on it and you're going to see the blinking blue line. You just want to start typing out your text. All right, you're going to click off, click on it and use one of the corner nodes to increase the size just to scale it up. Then you want to come to your right hand side to the A with the line on it. And this is where you're going to be able to change your fonts. All right. All the fonts here will be the same ones that are stored to your computer. So you'll have uh, a wide variety of fonts to choose from. There is no right or wrong with this particular design and what fonts that you choose. I'm going to choose this one because that's the one that, um, you know, the base design that I was working on. But I just want to show you a few examples of designs uh, that you can do in just different fonts. Even with the word Bahamas, you can see I did, you know, two different ones here and it gives it a totally different look. This one right here is a collegiate design or collegiate font. Just want to show you that uh, there are so many things you can do with the fact that uh, football season is in. So you can do this for your favorite sports team, whether it is NFL or college. Um, different high schools and things like that. I also wanted you to see that you don't have to do three rows. You can do just two. So how you customize this is totally up to you. There is no right or wrong. You know, feel free to be very creative and, you know, do it to how you see fit. All right, let's jump back to our base design. Now, some fonts are going to be a lot closer than others. Some will be very uh, far apart and you may need to bring them back in. With this one, they are kind of close for what we're going to do to create this design. So I'm going to come back over here to the textile window and I'm going to take my character spacing and I'm going to increase it. So you can either uh, decrease it, you can click anywhere within that box, It'll you'll see the number jump, you can type in a number, you can use your arrow keys, a couple different ways that you can choose to um, space out your text. I'm going to stop right here around like 115, right? Sometimes you may not know that you need to space it out until after you do the off the outline, which I did when I was doing the other one and I saw that it needs to have a little bit more space. So you may not have to do this right off the bat. You may end up doing your offset first and then realizing, okay, I want a little bit more space in between. Just undo, put the space in there, right? Now the next step, we're going to offset. Offset window, click offset. This design has a lot of sharp corners, so I am going to stick with that and go to corners. Now, you can definitely leave it as rounded and have your outside be a little, you know, have rounded corners. Again, no right or wrong to that. It's all personal preference. I'm going to hit apply, and you can also change the distance as well. So you can play around with it if you want the outline to be thinner, to be wider. You can play around with your distance before you hit apply. So just put the number in. Hit enter on your keyboard, see if you like it, no, change it. Once you find where you want it, hit apply. The way it looks will uh, depend on the size of your initial text because if it's smaller, that spacing can look a lot bigger. If it's bigger, that spacing can look a lot smaller. All right. So just you've noticed right here at the bottom of this one, the A, all the way to the A are welded together. 
Now, that might be a look that you're going for and you might like it, but if you don't, you have it where it's spaced out. Right? What we also want to do is kind of bring back that uh, initial text. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna fill it in with color. I'm gonna click on the Bahamas, the original text, and almost forgot something. You want to make a duplicate of your original text while it's still in text form, even if you put the spacing on it. Reason for that is if you want to go back in and you know change that to a different word, you just wanna know what font that was you used, you have to have a copy in the original text form. Once you do any modifications to it, whether you subtract, make compound path, weld, crop, anything like that, it becomes a path and you can't edit the text anymore and you also won't see what font you use. So it's a good idea and good practice to always just make a duplicate of any uh, designs that you're working on and like it has text that you're typing in before you make modifications to it. I'm also going to click on that middle one and I'm gonna make a duplicate right below this because we're gonna need that solid one that's not gonna have the outline. So I'm gonna hold down control on my keyboard because I have a Windows PC. If you have a Mac, just hold down Command and then hit your down arrow. That's going to create a duplicate right below. Right, I'm gonna right click and convert to path so that I have the true size of my text and I don't have the extra spacing around it so that when I go to a line, it doesn't like get all wonky on me. All right, and up here, I'm going to now right click and make it a compound path. So you can see we're gonna lose that middle part and it's gonna make it to where it looks like an outline. Now I have myself a little color chart right here that I made just sampling the colors from an image of a Bahamian flag. If you have designer edition or above, you can click on your properties dropper or hit I on your keyboard whether you have Windows or Mac and it will take on the properties of whatever you click on. So since I have it filled, I don't have any line color, it's gonna fill that way. If you don't have designer edition or above, you would have to come up to your uh, paint palette, click on the eyedropper here, and then select whatever color you want, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. Now what you wanna do is split this in half. Where you split it at is 100% up to you. To find center, I'm gonna just take a line, hold down shift, make my line straight across, select them both, come over to transform and I'm gonna align to the middle. Now, once you take a look at this, you may decide, okay, well, I don't really want it right here. It's a little too close to the top of the D here. I don't have enough of the M. You know, the, depending on the fonts that you use, you may decide, you know, you don't want yours to be centered and that's perfectly fine. You put your line where you want it to. And that's the joy of having the line. You kind of get to see what it's gonna look like before you um, apply the knife tool to it. And you know, you make a lot of changes. Now, if I put it here, I kind of like it here, but it is gonna make it to where my top half is gonna be bigger than my lower half. So it's gonna look a lot more spread out on the top versus the bottom. And that's gonna happen with a lot of your designs depending on what letters you are using. The A is wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So it's going to look a little bit closer together on the bottom and there's gonna be a lot more space at the top. All right, but I think I like that right there. I'm gonna come over to my knife tool, click on that, put my knife right over this line, hold down shift and just go straight across making sure I clear all of the text. And then I can move that line. All right, now I'm going to drag and select over all of the top portion, right click and group it together. And just to make it easier, I'm going to select everything, hold down shift, click on that group top section that's going to deselect it. And now I know I have only the bottom part selected and I'm gonna group that together. All right, now let's move this into place. Now, if you haven't seen my last video on annoying but useful tools, I'm gonna to show you how that crosshairs uh, tool will come in handy for something like this. So I'm gonna hold down shift, click on the top and bottom. I'm gonna align them to the left, all right? So that those line up. But my B, I don't want it to, oops, let's zoom back out. 
I don't want to align it to the left because then my S is going to sit too far in. I really want it to sit where it, you know, where that natural part, where that part comes from, which is the center of the outline. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hit H on my keyboard, which is going to bring up my crosshairs. I'm going to put my mouse right here in the corner where it's along the bottom of the B. And I'm going to click on here and move it to where, if you look at my lines, I'm lined up to the inside of that outline. And that's where I want it. So I'm going to leave that just like that. And then hit H on my keyboard to turn the crosshairs off. Now with the top portion, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hold down control and hit my up arrow on my keyboard. That's going to create a duplicate above. And then do it again for the second one. Now on the bottom, you can do the same thing. I'm going to show you a different way that you can replicate. If we come over here to our replicate tool, you can do single instances of uh, below, above, right, left. Uh, this one, it will give me a column of three, so it's going to automatically give me two copies. Now this is really close together, and this is not a bad design. I, like I said, with the top one, because of the way that it's set up, it does look a little bit more spaced out than the bottom one, but that's just because of the letters that we use in the way that it's set up, because it is right on it, but it just has a different look. You can choose to, if you want to look a little bit closer together, maybe bump it down, but you will be losing, um, you know, some of the design when you do that. So just be mindful of that, depending on which fonts you choose, you know, it can affect how your uh, final design will look. Right. I'm going to click on here, go up some with this one, select all of the pieces at the top, come over to transform and space vertically. So I'll have the same amount of spacing between uh, each layer. For the bottom one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold down shift so I can kind of jump it in bigger increments. I'm going to do two and see how that looks to see if, if I put a little bit more space in the bottom one, than it is at the top, will it kind of sort of match? Uh, again, it all depends on the letters that you are using. So that's pretty much set up just like that. We're going to highlight this, take the line color off that middle part mainly because it was on the rest of them, and that's it. And then you can add additional elements around it. Now, in my thumbnail picture, you see that I had my look kind of like the Bahamian flag. So as a bonus, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I'm going to take my entire design, which it was selected already, right click and group it together. Make a box. I want my peak to be somewhere within that A. I'm going to select the box and our stack text. We're going to um, center it or align to the middle. I'm going to click on my line, find out where the middle is. It's right here. Now I'm going to double click on that line and then click again to add an edit point right there at center. Then I'm going to click on the top edit point, hold down shift, click on the bottom edit point, then delete point. It's going to give me that triangle. I'm going to click on the Bahamas, um, like that whole design I created. Right click and copy. And I'm going to select the both of them. Um, you know what? I want to make a duplicate of this just to show you how you have to do it for vinyl. All right. So now we're going to select this. We are going to modify and crop. I'm going to fill this one with black and group it together. I don't have much of the A. I want to undo. Why don't I have, oh, I end up moving it. So let's take this and I'm going to shift it over some. I just want to see the tip um, of like how, how the flag is. I want to see the tip of that. So we're going to just move it over. I now want to delete this one and bring this one up. All right. So again, take this piece and copy it, select the both of them, crop, fill it with black, group together. 
right click, paste in front. Then right click, send to the back. And there it is. And this will be great for sublimation or maybe you're just doing like some type of printed design, printable vinyl, making a sticker from it um, and things like that. So that will be good to go if you're just doing some type of printed design or maybe just digital for a website or anything like that. It will be fine like this. We're going to go ahead and group it together. Now, if you do want to have this for, let's say, vinyl, you'll have to do it like a knockout design. So with the triangle and the design selected, we're going to right click and we're going to choose copy. Then we're going to crop. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in with black. I'm going to show you how to do it. If you don't have designer edition or above, there we go. And we're going to paste. I'm sorry, that's not paste in front, not just yet. I want to group this first. And then we're going to paste in front. Right. Click on it. Hold down shift. Select this. And this time we're going to subtract. And that's going to give it to you where it cut off the design uh, right where that triangle was for this portion. That way you don't end up duplicating uh, the underneath part for the black. And we're going to right click and group that together. Right. So you have your cutout right there. All right. So. Hopefully you guys learned a lot from this video. I hope you guys found it enjoyable. If you have any additional questions or you missed something, do not hesitate to go ahead and post it as a comment below. Um, also feel free to leave me suggestions for videos. I like, try, I like finding new and interesting topics and designs that I can create videos from. You guys saw this came from a Facebook group. So I'm always scouring Facebook groups for ideas for videos for you guys. You can either leave as a comment below. My email will be in the description box, info at silaholicsanonymous.com. You'll also see the link for the new website that launched. Um, on the website is where you'll find information on you know, classes when they are released, my recommendation sites and things like that. So be sure to check the website out, bookmark it, revisit it often, sign up for the email blast and you know, you'll get all of that information. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one.